Hey, what's up guys? Damien again. Uh, this is going to be my 7,500 mile update. My current setup, um, everything I've got on my bike as of now. Um, and yeah, just kind of go through things. Bike runs great. I have no um, current issues. Um, major changes since uh, last video is the battery system. So that big black box is a uh, uh, 52 volt, 17.5 amp hour, um, 18650 pack, and uh, here's my XLR port to charge it. So now I've I don't have my whole big um, lipo charging setup. I have the uh, cycle satiator, which is right here. I don't actually leave the satiator. Um, charging inside the battery pack I actually just uh, put it on top of like the back of my rack uh, even which is a good spot um, just because of heat I don't want the top uh, top cells to be um, you know hotter than the bottom cells so yeah that makes it way simpler um, way quicker uh, it's just a matter of plugging it in and setting whatever um, end voltage I want a lot of times it's 85% Sometimes it's 100%, it just depends on what range I want for the day. And I've got, <clears throat> this is, uh, I, I, I only used this like while I was learning my battery, but I got this from, uh, this is all from Luna Cycles. And I bought this just to kind of see what my average um, watts per hour, uh, sorry, watt hours per mile, whatever, um, was, but I basically know now, and I'm, I'm familiar with my battery and the way it behaves, so I leave that in there just in case I want to do a quick check, but otherwise um, I don't plug it in just because it does draw juice, and if by doing it this way, um, <clears throat> I can just leave everything plugged in. So, and I've got this REI lock uh, that I just uh, put on here for when I get some place. And what's cool now is um, when I don't have my charger in there, I can put my tool bag uh, on top. So if I just want to go for like a mobbing trip where I know I don't think um, or I won't be needing to charge, I don't want to carry like my panniers or a backpack or anything. Uh, the combination of having tools here and then I bought this um, Blackburn like top tube bag. And uh, that's really nice. I just have my multi-tool in here. and. I'll put my like keys um, or I'll lock my uh, my headlight and tail light in here and um, oh balls sorry someone just like drove up and then, luckily they drove away so anyway um, and then I've got this REI lock it's a double lock um, and that just like locks my uh, panniers to the rack like a double safety measure but these are my new panniers uh, Ortlieb back roller classics in the asphalt color um, and what I did is the, my kickstand isn't cut like perfectly straight so it does slightly lean to the left so what I did is I made sure that um, I made my right pannier like my day-to-day -day all all the time which is like bike locks um, rain gear tools uh, grease um, multimeter things like that Kind of utility side and then i've got my right side which is actually, I'll just open this up. so yeah black gloves rain gear tools day quill because i have a cold at the moment um, and then this side is my work stuff so uh, laptop sleeve which fits perfectly in there um, this is my camera case all my camera stuff um, I've got a external hard drive tie um, external battery pack right here battery charger pretty awesome bunch of cables and things uh, and that's you know and then basically otherwise I just distribute the weight uh, evenly across the top but what's cool and I should have probably showed before did that but I guess you can basically see is that even when the panniers are loaded pretty high um, 
this leaves like this whole space open because of the way it attaches right there, right? It attaches to the lower uh, tube. So these are, um, yeah, these are like, it's pretty sweet to be able to just put whatever I want in the back. And having uh, these um, panniers mounted to this lower tube, it doesn't really affect my riding style. I can still, you know, mob around and, and do what I want, even though I'm like weighed down pretty heavy sometimes. Um, so that's great. Otherwise, yeah, nothing else has changed, I think, since then. Um, <clears throat> I did, or since my last video, I should say. Um, I was trying to find, like, different ideas to be able to make this more waterproof, because even though they advertise this bag as waterproof, it's not. Um, and it's mainly because water will, like, collect uh, in here, right? And it hasn't leaked through yet, so I should say that. It, it, it technically has not leaked through, so um, I shouldn't say that it isn't waterproof. <laughs> uh, but I doubt, I highly doubt that it will stay completely dry. And the reason is, is because it, the water collects in here and there and stuff. So um, I was thinking about like a plastic cover to go over the top or something. But again, like a hard plastic cover and then you have to like store it or you have to keep it on your bike and then have it look weird. So instead what I did is I just bought some waterproof fabric, which is actually this stuff here. Um, and it works really well. So I just basically cut, um, I cut a piece to go up over um, both bags and then I just wrap it with like a, a black bungee cord all the way around the back. And uh, that seems to be fine. Um, it hasn't even leaked at all through that and then that allowed me to just cut a little piece off here And I'll get like a black rubber band so it doesn't look as tacky, but I mean it works I just like to keep this thing covered because I noticed that the there's like a return spring for your throttle and that actually will um, Kind of corrode a little bit um, when I bought my first bike Which already had it excuse me a kit with it uh, I noticed that that throttle was corroded and it was a lot harder to press. So when I went to switch it out, I ended up just uh, replacing the the metal spring itself versus the whole throttle um, from a different throttle anyway. So yeah, uh, I don't think I talked about my tires last time. Um, I'm riding Kenda Comforts. They're like the 841As or something like that. Um, they're actually cruiser tires, but they're really nice. Um, they're 1.9 inches wide and uh, it gives me some decent traction in like trail riding as well as uh, really good rolling resistance for commuting. It's kind of like the best of both worlds. Um, the thing I did do is I bought an actual tire gauge because my pump didn't have one and I was way off, man. I, I thought I was, I was running like, you know, 50 PSI when I was running like 25 to 30 PSI. It's really hard to tell um, depending on the softness of your tires and these are really soft tires so um, even when there's like 30 pounds they, they they feel like they are you know stiff even though they're not i don't know if that makes sense or not but um yeah so what, ha what was happening um, on my old set of tires too is because these rims are uh pretty narrow right the tire is, a, is quite a bit um, wider then when they're deflated, then this rim kind of like slices into the, the tire, or at least it like starts to cut away. And so I was actually getting the tire splitting in places um, on the rear wheel, especially on my old tires. And when I looked it up, and you could see this like crisscross pattern starting to form. And that's actually how I figured out what it was, is because I was typing in crisscross pattern because I thought it was really weird. And somebody had said that that was because of low tire pressure. So, uh, yeah. The next thing I just did um, was I upgraded my brakes to Avid BB7 or uh, Avid single digit sevens um, linear pull brakes, and I just put the Cool Stop dual compounds on there. Um, these are great brakes. Even the the stock pads were really good, but you know Portland has it's iffy weather, so I went with the best of both worlds. Um, these are the V2s too, so they have more tread. Uh, so yeah, those are all my changes. This is the bike as it sits, or as it rides. 
7,500 miles, about mm, 3,500 on this frame. Yeah, and uh, what else was I gonna do? Oh, so um, I found a, that's actually where I'm going uh, this after, right, like basically right now, my next place to go is going to talk to a wheel builder about replacing the, the spokes in the rim because um, I really like my Yesco motor. I, there's nothing wrong with it. And I found out, uh, if you watched my other video, where I was talking about burning up my motor and I was pulling spokes off of that wheel, I don't think I actually burned up that motor. I think what I did was the same thing that happened to this one a little while back, where there's like this little yellow box where the, um, the hall sensor wires come into uh, into and that they connect with the controller, but they use this like big yellow box that has like three screw terminals on there. Well, I think one of the screw terminals came loose because of how hot it was getting, so it like expanded and then it loosened. Um, and that's what made the motor cut out. And I actually didn't even check it that time, I just totally thought I burned up my motor. So, yeah, I might even have a completely spare motor that's just totally fine. So uh, regardless, anyway, I like these motors. Um, it's definitely cheap enough for me to get another one, another whole kit if I want extra parts again. Um, but I wanted to just replace the wheel and the spokes, so I'm going to see a wheel builder here in Portland and uh, see what it'll cost me to have it laced into a better rim. So, yeah, uh, St. Pedals, nice and really, really nice, like, platform. I kind of ride my bike like a horse. <laughs> So I use the, you know, my foot leverage and stuff to uh, take the take the edge off, like bumps and things. Um, you know, get me off my saddle. So, yeah, that's about all I have. 7,500 miles. I can't show you. I'll take a picture or a screenshot on my phone and post it or put it up so you can actually see. Adding it to the 5,000 that I already rode, which you can prove. I can prove by looking at one of my older videos when I, before I um, factory reset my phone and didn't save the data. But yeah, it's a great bike. I love this bike. It's perfect. I think it's, yeah, I think it's the ideal commuter e-bike, at least for where I live in Portland, where I've got a, a lot of hills and a lot of trails and you know, a lot of big beefy all around, you know, I can pull the panniers off and it can just mob as fast as I want and put the panniers on, have some extra store space in the back and be able to carry like larger loads. It's a great bike. Anyway, all right, cheers.